Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to the first in a series of videos about Reichbusters Project Vril. Yes, I've got a whole lot of stuff for Reichbusters and I'm really looking forward to painting it up. But, as per my usual philosophy, I'm not going to spend ages and ages doing it. I want to play the games, I want to have fun, move on to the next game. There's always something new to do. And in fact, for Mythic games alone, I've got a whole lot of Joan of Arc stuff to paint as well. So, as usual, this is not going to be a masterclass on painting miniatures. This is going to be painting them fast, but still looking good. And with that in mind, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Instead of you spending ages and ages watching me paint every single miniature, which is kind of boring, I reckon, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly and I'm going to show you the finished painted miniature and show you the paints that I used and describe the steps I used, but do it really fast. So, when you're about to paint a particular type of miniature in Reichbusters, you can just watch a few minutes of video and quickly set up your stuff and get painting. So let me know what you think of this new technique. I think it's going to be great because I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to get to the information really fast. And the faster you get the information, the faster you do the painting, and the faster you get the game on the table. So let's get started with the extra stuff. The doors, and, and the turn things, and the card trays. And the first thing I'm going to do are these wonderful card trays. They're just made out of plastic, but they're really nice when you paint them up and look very atmospheric. So you could paint these any colour you like, of course, and you could put in yellow where the busters is and, and whatever. But I thought I'd just keep them pretty simple. So I started off with a black prime, and then I did a very rough dry brush with storm vermin fur. So using a large brush, just rubbed that all over the black and did a base coat. And while I was doing this, I kept a sort of darker colours in all these little recesses to give them a sense of depth. Now I just worked that up with a lighter dry brush, adding a bit of Corax white to the storm vermin fur, and coming up to quite a light colour and with each coat doing a lighter dry brush, so I was picking out the detail. That's your basic coat. Uh, the next thing to do is paint these little lugs, and I used Iron Breaker for those little lugs. Just pick those little lugs out there and there and there. Um, then I gave, after it was very dry, I gave the whole thing a wash with Agrax Earthshade. Good old Agrax Earthshade and uh, this brought out the detail quite nicely. Now, I didn't leave it over the whole surface, I rubbed it off a bit, and with this I just use a mixture of my own hand and a bit of paper towel, and I might rub it off where it's uh, on the uh, top surfaces, and leave it pooling in the recesses a bit more, just to give it some depth. So you don't have to, you can cover the whole thing, but you can wipe it off, off and manipulate it a bit, so it just runs into the recesses, and it's not too heavy a wash. This gives it more depth. After that was thoroughly dry, I started doing a bit of weathering. And for around the lugs, you can see there's a little bit of a rust effect around those lugs. And for that, I used Riser Rust. So I just painted a little bit around the edges there. For some more weathering, I used my usual weathering techniques. And they're a mixture of all kinds of things. Um, Typhus Corrosion by Games Workshop is a technical paint that's really good. And that's good for um, putting in the little recesses. You can use a brush like this and just rub it in the recesses. And again, use your finger and move it around, you know, and just manipulate it and just get whatever effect you want. It's messy and it's, it doesn't matter if it's messy because you're weathering something. So I've got that. When that's dry, always make sure you're drying in between layers. Another handy thing is a weathering powder. This is a Vallejo pigment. Uh, burnt umber and I use this a lot for weathering and it's just a powder As you can see I put a bit of this powder on a piece of aluminium foil and then just pick it up and just scrub it into the spots where I want a bit of weathering and dirt and it gives us a nice nice sort of dirt feel so you can see here's a sequence of these and they're all looking rough and dirty and they look like concrete and they came out really well and very easy to do um, you could also, if you want to go crazy, add some blood effects. Flip a little bit of blood for the blood going on it as well. Put it on a brush and go flip, flip, and flick some blood on. I didn't do that in this case, but you can do that. Once that's all thoroughly and thoroughly dry, give it a varnish, of course. I use this one. It's called Tamiya, and it's TS79. It's a semi-gloss uh, varnish, and I like it because it gives it just a tiny bit of gloss, which makes the colour sort of lift a bit. Um, you can use a matte varnish if you prefer. Okay, that's those done. Let's move on. 
These turn order dog tags used a very similar technique. The only difference was is that my base coat over the black was lead belcher, a dark metal, and it was highlighted with rune fang steel. Apart from that, I used the same techniques. You can even see I applied a little bit of blood to the edges of these so it looked like they were really well worn and used. And they came out really nicely, very easy to do. Again, once they're all dry, varnish them. This alarm token uses the same technique as the tags. The only difference is a little bit of brown on the handle here. And this red arrow started off with corn red, highlighted up to Mephiston red, then a little bit of blazing orange, right up to a tiny little dot of Uriel yellow. And you can see that yellow is just a little bit of dot on the points just to make that jump out a little bit. Very easy to do, and again, a little bit of weathering and brown inks to make it look grotty. Then I started working on the doors. Now there's a lot of these doors in the set, um, so I wanted to do them pretty quickly. And again, same techniques, uh, using your weathering techniques. And the great thing about these, of course, is that you can do them really roughly. Uh, the, you're not going for clean, pristine doors. If you are, you'd use different techniques. In this case, I'm painting them very roughly, so they're very well worn. So again, the same as the dog tags, starting off with lead belcher up to rune fang steel to give a little bit of highlight. And then all that weathering, um, brown ink. You can also use some black ink a bit of nylon oil just to do the shading on those as you can see put a bit of, bit of blood on there as well tell a bit of a story with the weathering if you can put your weathering in spots where a normal door would be weathered so in here all the bloody handprints are sort of over that handle area like so on this door I've done a big blood splat there and then it's dripped down onto the floor like that so it makes it look a bit more realistic on this one, again, someone with a very bloody hand has tried to open the door, and if you look on the other side, closed it as well. This kind of really rough weathering is fun to do as well. You can rub it on with a brush. You can wipe it off with your finger. This is a contrasting color. You can see I've used metal on the painted door. You could also use uh, just gray if this was a lighter door. And there are different ways of applying that. As I said, with a brush, with your um, finger or you could use a little bit of foam here it's, this is a little bit of foam ripped off some old um, miniature packaging and i dip this in the paint and i can use this to dip on some weathering technique here's an example of that i've got a little bit of metal on the foam and just gone bip 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 and that works quite well now the colors of the door i've used a few different colors but they're all quite dark um, this color here is castellan green mixed with Abaddon black and the very dark red is corn red mixed with Abaddon black. The little lights above the door are painted in with Uriel yellow and you could put a little white highlight on those as well if you wanted to um, but very simple and you don't have to be too neat really I mean it's a light so it's spilling light. Um, as I said I've done these pretty quickly so I can churn through them and they look good on the table. Here's one of the heavy duty doors as you can see I've painted the handle with a very dark red and again, more of that uh, highlighting, in this case, rune fang steel, just especially where it would be scuffed on the handle itself. You can paint it on the red color to look like the paint is scuffed off and the edges of the door like so. Again, all of these, when they were finished, were sprayed with varnish. And actually, I could do a little bit more there. I could paint in this little um, button panel here if I wanted to, to add a bit more detail. I might go back and do that just to add a little bit more. But again, doing these very quickly because there's quite a few to do. There we go, folks, we've got started. We're going to zip through the Reichbusters sets in this way, and I'm going to show you step by step how I painted them. And I'm going to make these videos short and sweet so you can paint them up quickly yourself and not waste time sitting on YouTube watching me paint miniatures. You've got to paint them yourself. Thanks very much for watching. Look out for part two. It's the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. Don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff. See you next time.